So I'm really thankful to teach this class tonight. It's, uh, it's an important issue when we uh, have to resolve conflicts. And it's, I actually, I have found that most conflicts can be, can be done, can be um, resolved, um, especially if you know what you're doing. So if you, if you know what you're doing, there's no problem. So we're going to make sure that everybody knows what they're doing tonight. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I wanted, to, I wanted to start off by talking about uh, some basic principles, some philosophical ideas, really, about uh, family search and about uh, making sure that things on family search look correct. So that's the first issue, is that we want to make sure that the, our records reflect uh, the correct data. We want it to be right. So getting it right is important to us because this is this record is is a record that we're going to present to the savior and we want to be able to present this record and be able to stand up for it and say that we've done our best to make it right so so when you're doing these records when you're working on these names these individuals these people who really live you want to make sure that you get the information right um, your name is going to be attached to everything that you do in family search. When you change something with you, when you add something, it, almost anything you do in family search is going to have your name on it. And therefore, your reputation is attached to that. So you want people um, to be able to say, oh, Peggy, I know her. I know she's done a lot of work in this area and I trust her work. Now, that doesn't mean that Peggy shouldn't put all of her sources in. But if Peggy says something and she has sources to back it up, I'm going to look at that a little more carefully than when Bubba tells me. So we love Bubba. Bubba's our cousin, but Bubba doesn't have any sources listed. So we want to make sure that we have our sources listed because our name, our reputation is attached to that. And it's going to be very important that you do that. Now, let's think about for a moment. I know that you all love your spouses, your parents, your children, your siblings, you love them. Um, so the question is, how do you prove that you love someone? In general, you prove that you love someone by the, your behaviors, your uh, actions toward them. If you love the Savior and you've been assigned uh, to do some um, ministering visits, then you do those ministering visits, not necessarily for any reward that you're going to get from those people, but because you told the Savior that you would do it through his uh, uh, people that administer these things on earth so you have to prove you can prove that you love someone and you do that by your actions you can say you love peanut butter but if you never eat peanut butter or you never purchase peanut butter and you don't have it in the house do you love peanut butter i don't know but that kind of applies to people too you love these people that are in your life and if you love them, there will be behaviors and actions that you take to show and to prove to them and to yourself that you do love them. So that is the issue in family search. If you believe something to be true, then you have to prove it. And the sources are our testimony that something is true. So the sources become our testimony. And it's really important that we have them and look for them and use them on a regular and constant basis. Okay, let's look at uh, some sources. Let's say someone has put some information in that you believe is not true. What is the first thing you should do? Change it? No. Even if your records indicate that what they have put in is incorrect, don't change it. Let's don't change anything until we are sure that we have the right data. All right. So, Alvy, let's say somebody has put incorrect information on Alvy. So, what is the first thing we're going to do? Get mad? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> but but the really, the first thing you should do, you want to make sure that it's correct. So, the first thing you should do is look at the source button. Now, I hope... 
I hope in general, actually, that I'm preaching to the choir and that you all have done this and have used these buttons often. I use them every day. But if you haven't used them, this is going to be important for you to become familiar with. So you can see that I'm hovering over the word sources. Can you see that? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so we're going to click on sources. Now let's look at what sources there are. There's the 18, 1950 census and 1930 and the 40. I really, like, this is what I like to do. You don't have to do this. This just helps me. I try to move all the census records up to the top in order. You can move those by just uh, dragging them. So you click on it and drag it up. There. Now I can see that, oh, looky there in, uh, 1930, his name was misspelled. Instead of a V, somebody put a B. That's okay. And then in 1940, he's uh, still with his parents. And in 1950, uh, we can look at, let's look at the unfinished attachments and see who else is in that household. There he is. And he's, Alvy is married to his wife, Edith. And he's got two children. And he's got a third child which I'm not gonna add at this time because she's living. So you can see that <clears throat> two of the children are there and they're deceased. And he has a third child who is um, who I believe to be living. All right, so let's go back, Alvi, and the census records. So I believe, and there is even an obituary for Alvi and um, there's his army enlistment records if we wanted to check that. Also, uh, always look for, and uh, usually with the people that I work on, I put in uh, some notations. I haven't done any for Alvi, but you always look at this area right here, collaborate, because you're, and it's going to tell you if there's any notes in there. There don't have to be any notes in this guy, but there's, uh, there may be some there, and I put a lot of notes there. So you, you might want to look there, and every time you pull up somebody. You want to look and see if there's any notes. Okay, so we're, Alvi seems to be good and correct, and we, and uh, Alvi has been uh, notated as somebody has listed that he's his direct grandson, and that, and he confirms his birth date. Now, I don't always care what somebody says about it, anybody else's birth date. I want a source. Um, the only person that really knows is probably the mother. <laughs> I know I was there for the birth of my children. And so I know when they were born and I don't trust almost anything else. One time, I, I think I've told this story before, but I'd like to tell it again. I have a, a friend at in Kentucky who mm -hmm. I worked, I work, she's deceased now, but I worked a lot with very closely with her to work on our sandwich line. And it was a lot of fun because she had worked on this many more years than I had. And it was really interesting to work with her. So I was, she gave me some of her papers and uh, this was in Kentucky and I came home and started working on them. And I found a discrepancy on a, a birthday on one of the cousins. And I called her and I said, Elizabeth, um, you have that he was born such and such date, but the Kentucky Fighter Record Index, which is the official record, says that he was born a day later and she said are you calling me a liar <laughs> no of course not i i'm just telling you that there's a discrepancy here and she said well i don't know what to tell you that i'm correct and the kentucky vital records index is not so i said okay because i didn't want to antagonize her <laughs> further than I already had. And, and of course, you and I know that I was not calling her a liar. I, I, she, she wasn't the mother though. She wasn't there, but this is, this, this discrepancy was there. So I'm just asking her about the discrepancy. So I called the guy whose birth it actually was. And he told me that the birth date that Elizabeth gave me was correct, but that it was listed incorrectly in the Kentucky Vital Records Index. So there you have uh, an instance where you're gonna have discrepancies. And what do you write down? Well, 
I wrote down the Kentucky Vital Record Index. Mm -hmm. And then in the notes or the collaborations, I put this uh, issue that he said that it was incorrect and that this was his correct birth date, such and such. Now, let me give you a little theory about why I did that. And you can disagree with me and I won't mind. But I try, if there's any discrepancies between somebody's memory or even their doc, their personal um, uh, records, and I'm talking about handwritten or whatever records, if there's any discrepancy, I try to go with the official record because <clears throat> that's the record that everybody will have access to. Anybody that comes along after us and wants to look and see when that guy was born, one of the thing, the places they're going to look is as the Kentucky Vital Record Index. That's where they're going to look. And if I notated a different uh, date than was in the official record, then they're going to wonder, well, who, how is that going to be correct? How, who is right? And so I always put the official record, if I believe it, and <laughs> and put that down and then put the put in notations the situation that was uh, led me to that, led me to decide to use the Kentucky Vital Record Index, which is the official record. Does anybody have any comments about that? I had a couple <laughs> of thoughts of, of experiences I had. Okay. Uh, one, one of them is I, I have a sister that was married on June 15th, I believe it was 1958, after they had three, four daughters. And about 25, 30 years later, they got divorced. Two or three years later, they remarried and they decided it would be neat to get married on their anniversary. So now you got June the 15th, I don't remember, 2000, let's say. And so I made a careful note explaining that because somebody's gonna look at it and say, well, they got the day and the months right, but they messed up the year because their four daughters were born before that. So I went in and explained that in the notes because I'm thinking we got to look at these things as if someone that does not know anything about this, what's right. it going to look like to them? That's right. So that clarified it to them. Mm -hmm. And uh, another, yeah. another experience I had real quick, my mother years ago gave me all the genealogy on her brothers and sisters. Back in the 80s, I went to visit her last living aunt, which was older than her. She looked at that record and she goes, where did you get this information? It's all wrong. I said, my mother. And she said, she asked her sister, where did you get this information? She goes, I don't know. I just thought that's what it was. So even though my mother, who I trusted, was wrong on everything on my genealogy. So just because that might be her brothers and sisters doesn't mean she knows the dates. Well, that's exactly right. And that's why we have to have sources. We cannot yeah. <clears throat> rely on Aunt Jean or Bubba or anything else. We have to have the source. The source has to be there. And even if someone who you trust tells you dates, even of their own dates, when they were married, when other people passed or other things, you still need that source because one day, she's going to be gone you're going to be gone and all that's left is what you wrote down and so you had better have the correct source there so you're you're exactly right and that's what needs to be done is you need to write down any discrepancies and notate it in the in the you can put it in the collaborate do you use collaborate no i really have never done it i thought that's when you're going to research with somebody so i never used it but i have had a i have gone in and added notes where did you put them? I don't remember now. Okay, well, I'm not denying that you put them in. I'm just saying that a good place to put them is in Collaborate. Okay. Let's look at the Collaborate button. So here you go. You, I just clicked on Collaborate, and this screen popped up, and it says Notes. Add a new note. So here you might want to say Conflict, conflict on birth date. And then you would write down what the conflict was. Maybe I did so, use that because it was okay. notes that I put it in. Okay, well that's good. So so that's that's a good place to put it. I I try to put a lot of stuff there because I I and but 
people don't always look at it. So try to always remember to look at pull the collaborate button and to put that in. So what, so far, if we found a discrepancy so far, we have not um, changed anything. We're just still thinking about it. We wanna make sure. Now, the, the next thing we do um, is to go over here where it says research help. I hope you're all familiar with that. Let's add a couple of sources for Alvi. You click on the button. Scroll down. There we go. Review and attach. And so there we go. And the birth that's on the find a grave record is the same as the birth date in your tree. That's good. And so is the death date. And you also have the burial. So that's really great that all of those things are there. So you want to now, you want to attach that source. All right, and you, uh, you go back, you X out of that and go to the next one. Let's do just a couple more. Review and attach. And his mother was Minnie Perkins. So that's correct. And then we're gonna attach this record. Now let's go to the third one. Here's the third one is the census. We're gonna review and attach. And And it looks like he's by himself. So we're not, we're not gonna pursue that any further right now. All right, so we have, there are still more. Now to get the rest of them, you can either do it from here, which is what I like to do, or you can go show all. And it's gonna list all the sources that uh, the hints that are there. Now, as we go along, if this is new to any of you, I wish you'd let me know because I, I'd be happy to discuss it further because this is a really important function of family search is you need to have these sources. And this is where you see them is those two places there. There's only gonna be three listed on the details page, but all of them, the hints that are available are gonna be listed under uh, when you click on show all. Once you click on that and attach a source, does it disappear off the hints? Yes. Okay. But it will be on your source list where it says sources. See, right. before we started, it said six. And then I added those three and now it says nine. And now there's three more. So you're go always gonna have that where yeah. if you put in something, Family search is just going to intuitively look for additional records and might pull up some others for you. So this is going to be a really important thing. You have to do this. You must do this every time you pull up an individual in family search. Go to the research help. Be sure you have it clicked. So you can unclick it and it's gone. But if you click on it, it's going to be there. And you have to list. You need to do this every time for every person. Put all the hints in. Does anybody have an objection to doing that? Good, because I find it all yes. the time. I find people that have worked on these lines and Karen, they don't Karen, bother. Oh. Uh -huh. Karen, yes, uh, I, I not definitely not an objection. Uh, you mentioned it, but I want to emphasize whenever you attach a record. And like you said, you may attach that record and it may cause three other record hints to pop up. Right. So it really is important to attach those and you'll get more and more, you you might get more and more records for each one that you click on. That's so right. yes, very important. Okay, good, thank you. Okay, so you wanna make sure that you add all the hints and all the census records. That is just something you should do for every person that you work on. You wanna add all the hints and every census. So Alvy Holt is in three censuses. He's, he's in the uh, 30, the 40 and the 50. And we wanna make sure that we have him 
in those three censuses, and and we do. Can I there mention one thing? Yes. I get emails all the time from Salt Lake saying, "Here's a hint on one of your relatives." Do other people get those too? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I get some. I don't get maybe as many as you. I don't want all of them. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't mean they're not good. That, but I have a very, very large database, and I, I just can't look at all of those. Now, if they're my direct line, I, I like looking at them. But even at that, you know, I've got, I've gone over my direct line quite a bit. Now, that doesn't mean they're not helpful. If they're helpful to you, then keep doing it. Are they helpful to you? I said some of the ones they gave me hints. They're not really in my direct line. They're Right. Cousins of somebody right. or whatever, and so I just look at it and say, "Okay, yeah." But I don't... Well, I'm the I'm the I'm a convert. I'm mm -hmm. the first convert in our family, and I don't have any uh, pioneer ancestors. So occasionally, I've gotten uh, hints from Salt Lake saying, "Hey, we found your pioneer ancestor," and uh, yes, it's a very usually a very very distant cousin somehow that uh found the church so that's great but it's certainly not a direct line some of the ones i get might be like one of my great 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 grandfathers had two or three wives yeah well the direct line i come through is the one i worry about but if it's wife number three and it's the husband of that wife and then one of their children i go nah that's getting too far over to the side <laughs> okay well, you know, we all choose what we work on, and it's important to know that we all bring something to the to to the table. So, whatever you bring to the table is beneficial, and if that's important to you or not important to you, that's for your to make that yeah. decision. But what I'm getting at is every person that you pull up. Again, I want to emphasize every person. You need to make sure you add all these hints, and you add every census record that that person appeared in. So we already know that uh, Alvy has been recorded in three different census records, and that's good. If he wasn't, we would want to stop. Okay, we still haven't made any changes to Alvy, even if we think it's wrong, we haven't changed it. We wanna make sure that we have all the records in front of us. So make sure that you do that. Now, what if he was born in 1902? and didn't die until 1960. Well, if he was born in 1902, we need to have him in the 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50. You need to make sure that you find him in those census records and notate it and attach the record in family search. Now, there's some other census records like uh, state census records or something that's in odd numbers? Sure. Like 25, 35? Sure, do those too. Yeah. Not every state has census records, but if you can find them, then you should add them. You, every piece of census record that there is, you should find you, you can that you could find. You need to add that. All right. So we haven't changed anything for Alvi, whether it's right or wrong. If it's wrong, we haven't changed it. We've looked first. We've looked at uh, the hints and the census records. Now, look. There's been several people here who contributed to Alvi's information. Uh, some uh, Michael Gasbera, uh, N. Franks One, Jordan Hall. So there have been other people who have worked on this line. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. But I'll tell you what else I do when I'm looking at something and I want to make sure that it's correct, or it's, if I, especially if I have a question about it, I go over here and click on Ancestry. Do you all have the ability to do that? Is there anyone who does not have the ability to click on Ancestry and go to Ancestry? Everyone can do that? Yes. Yeah. I'm happy to hear that. Okay, so you go to Ancestry. Let's do that. And it says, oh, you're leaving off. Okay, but we'll come back. So, so here is Alvi's records that are in Ancestry. And I'm going to go to the first one pull it up and there's there's Alvi's find a grave record and I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to click on find others who are researching Alvi. Now 
if there's anything I do that you don't do or that you have a question about, please let me know because I consider this very important. All right, so here we go. Here is Alvy in Ancestry and he's in a whopping 21 trees. We're probably not gonna be able to look anytime at all of those trees, but let's click on Alvy and um, see what Sharon has to say. So Sharon gives pretty much the same information that we already had. That's good. And she has his wife and one of his children who's deceased. So that's really good. Now we could also, I want to go back and look at all the trees that Alvy's in. So there is Alvy and he's in 21 different trees. Do you, can you all see that? Okay. So mm -hmm. what you can do, we already looked at Sharon's. All right, so we so Alvy is in 21 trees in family in ancestry. Now remember, there's a significant difference between how family search presents individuals and how ancestry does. Ancestry, everybody who has a tree can put that person in their own tree. So you're going to have many trees and Alvy has a whopping 21. How many trees does Alvy have in Family Search? One. Because everybody is a unique individual, and Family Search does only list people as a unique one time individual. Is that clear? I hope it's clear. So let's look down here. Curtis Hole. Now, look. Confusing. I'm sorry? He less confusing. <laughs> But he's just there one time and then everybody ties into him. That's right. But th there's also there's benefits to both. So, but let's look just for a second here at Alvy. Now, I, li I like it when Alvy has a lot of sources. Do you see that Alvy has 12 records and 12 sources in Sharon's family lineage? As we go down the go down the page, they have various different numbers of records and sources. Do you, are you all familiar with that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you go on down and oh, the Robinson family tree has zero records and zero sources. So I am probably not gonna look at anything they have to say because Bubba told them this or they just copied it from somebody else. So I do not find them, um, I wouldn't say credible, but I, I do want to look for sources. So I am not particularly interested in, in somebody's tree that has no sources. Can I ask you a question on that? Sure. What does it mean, 85,841 people? They have more people than the ones that have records. <laughs> well, I mean, there are people. people are in their tree? Okay, there are people. There are people who submit trees to the ancestry who are very, very specific about who they want to work on and who they want to include in their tree. I cast a very wide net and I have a very large database. This person, this Perkins family tree right here with 440 people does not cast a wide net. They're only interested, and I don't know what they're interested in, but I'll tell you one thing. I doubt some of what they're, I, I think they've probably copied a lot of their stuff because see where it says here, Adair, Hancock, Kentucky? That's incorrect. Adair is a county in Kentucky, not a city in Hancock County in Kentucky. Yes. So if somebody's got something that blaringly wrong to me, then that's another reason I'm not particularly interested. But you know, it depends on what you're looking for. Sometimes you can uh, scroll down on some of these people, like um, you can see that most people have him married to Edith Hadley. Do you see that right there? And then you scroll down and somebody, everybody seems to have him married, except, uh-oh, now we're getting into more sparser sources. And uh, this guy doesn't even have him married. So I don't know why this person doesn't have his, uh, his marriage listed, but it's probably because he's just very focused 
on something that I'm not, I'm not sure what they're focused on because I don't know this person, but they're obviously more focused on, on maybe the Holt or the Perkins tree because they haven't even listed his wife. So, so we can go on down and this tree, the Brandstetter family tree has even less people. If we're looking at how many people you have, that he only has 239 people in his tree and he doesn't even have parents. And again, he's made this mistake. So I suspect that he's copied this tree because it's incorrect and they're repeating this incorrect uh, data over and over. So we go on down and we, we can go to the next page. Now, what am I looking for? One thing I might be looking for are pictures. So even though here we have Alvy Holt and here is this Williams Williamson family tree and they're wrong. So that, so I've already told you that I have suspicions about people who have blaringly incorrect data and he doesn't have any records and he doesn't have any sources, but you know what? He could have a picture that in his file that I'm looking for. And so sometimes it, now this guy had, this guy has 20 is in 21 trees. So I'm probably not going to look in every tree, but if you go back and back again to where we, we searched for Alvy, remember, and this popped up from family search, you can scroll down a little bit. And uh, most of the time right here in this list, there'll be uh, one of the categories will be pictures. So you want, I always want a picture. So this guy doesn't seem to have any pictures in this, but he does have a military record. There are military records. It's probably not him, but I don't know. So let's look at it real quick. Okay. So this Alvy was uh, departed from uh, into his service from Brooklyn. And this guy was born the 13th, September, 1925. And I can't remember off the top of my head. I don't think these are him, but it doesn't matter. What I was looking for was a picture. Do you guys look for pictures? Yeah. Good. Okay. So we have checked in Ancestry and we find that basically Ancestry, most of the trees on Ancestry have sources and the if we had looked further, and I usually do, look at their sources because I want to make sure I have every source that I have that I can have, and especially again census records. All right. So now, now we're ready. We have decided that these dates for Alvy are correct. But what if they weren't correct? I want you to look at one more thing. We're all on the detail view. See where it says edit? You click on edit for Alvy and it will list every source that Alvy's in right there. This has become one of my favorite things because I didn't have to go to the list of sources where he's attached in various things. This is, it's, it has his name and how his name is listed. It's very easy to look at this. So it's, this is a really fun little place to, to go and look for all the sources that Alvy is in. And you can see he's in many. All right, so let's say that Al, we decide for some reason that Alvy is not a son of John Washington Holt and many Florence Perkins. Let's say that we have found sources that pretty much confirmed to us that Alvy is in the wrong place, that these are not his parents. What do you do? Anybody want to make a suggestion? First, what? you write down all the numbers that belong to those people <laughs> before you start moving people around. Keep their okay. names. Well, I'm not clear exactly, Sister Grisso, why we do that. But if that helps you, then you should do that. But that's not what I do. So here, let me show you what I would do. Thank you for mentioning that because you're right. The PID numbers are very important as we try to uh, identify these individuals. But let's say that Alvy is wrong and you, 
you decided you wanted to write down their number, you can always hover over it and copy the ID. Do you use that? Where it says copy ID, do you all use that? Where does it copy to? <laughs> the clipboard. Where's the clipboard? It's <laughs> invisible. Okay, so do you know how to copy and paste data? Uh, I think so. All right, well, this has copied it to the clipboard. And when you're ready to paste it somewhere, you just right click and hit paste and it will put that number, the ID number there. All right, so try to use this. This is very helpful. Look at, see, it will do that with every one. See where it says copy ID? You just click on it and it the ID is copied to the clipboard. Where are you gonna, what are you gonna copy and put it to? Okay, well, that's a good question. And in this case, I won't be doing that. But but there are going to be times when you will need to have that I, that number because as Candy was just uh, mentioning, those numbers are very important and they help you to be able to manipulate this data. It's much easier to manipulate this data with a number than with a name. All right, let's just, I want to take this one more step and ask, if you want to ask a question, I'm happy for you to do that. So let's say, now we're just pretending, okay? That we're saying, let's say that I know now, because I've looked at all the sources, I've looked at Ancestry, and I've decided that Alvy does not belong in this family group, and I want to get him out of there. See this? You click on that little button, and it's, do you see how it's a little square with a pencil in it? Took me a long time to figure out that that's what that was. It's a square with a pencil. So then I would click, let's say, now remember, you are removing him from this family. That's what you want to do. You don't delete him because you, let me go back. You can't delete him anyway because he um, was entered by other people. You can't delete something that was entered by other people. Somebody else entered Alvia. So I'm not going to be, that delete button is not going to be available to me. All right. So if I wanted to remove him, I click here and I click remove or replace. Do you all see that? Mm -hmm. yes. Click on that. And then it then it's now it's it's cautioning me. We're gonna, it says we're gonna delete this parent-child relationship. It's recommended that you delete relationships only when you're confident that the relationship never existed or the, when the relationship is a duplicate. So so we've decided that Alvy is not a son of John Washington Holt and many Florence Perkins. Then you have to, now this goes back to your reputation and your integrity. I have reviewed the relationships, sources and notes for this individual and you click on that and then you remove parents. Are you all following that? Is there anybody who has a question about that? No. I. I know he's still out there, but that means he's floating in Never Never Land. Okay, good so job. Thank you. Okay, now <laughs> let's talk about that for a second. So we didn't remove him because he's he really is a child of that. But that's how you would do it. Remember again, see this little box here with the right. pencil in it? That's how you remove people from family groups. You can remove husbands, wives, children. It's It's very easy to do it once you are able to manipulate the data with this little box. Now, you're right, Brother Hill, that one, if you remove him, he's going to be floating in space. Now, we don't want him to do that. So we've already, the, how did we determine that he wasn't a son of John Washington Holden, many Florence Perkins? We looked at his sources. So I highly recommend and strongly suggest that when you remove somebody from a family group, whether it's a husband, a wife, a child, whatever it is, that you go to that person individually and look at where they do belong. Now, that's that's an added burden to us, isn't it? Because here we are, we're doing our own thing, we're working our own line, and all of a sudden this guy pops up that doesn't belong. And we remove him. So it, our, he's not our problem anymore in that he's not in that family group, but he's floating around in space. So if you do not find out or make an effort at least to find out where he actually belongs, what's going to happen? 
somebody's going to, whoever put him in there incorrectly in the first place is going to come along and put him back because that's where they think he goes. So you go and find, you go to Alvi, who's floating in space, and you start looking at his sources and put him with his right family group. Is that clear? Yeah, I'm a bad guy because I did that one time, but I don't know what happened to him. <laughs> well, that's, that is why you copy the ID. Do you see that? Yeah. And then you open a new tab and go to Alvi. And because you've removed him from this family. So now you want to go to Alvi and find out, well, where does poor Alvi go? We don't want him floating in space. And we don't know if the person who actually put him there a, will come back and ever look at him again. Or B, will come back and say, why did you do that, Brother Hill? You took him off of this family and he belongs in this family. And so they'll put him back. And then you have the same problem all over again. So. Well, don't you they have in to, their place to make notes while you removed him? Well, yes. Did I not show you that? Yeah, that's what I mean. I would have put it in a note before I removed him. Well, okay. I'm not disagreeing with you that, that that will be in the notes. I'm just telling you that you need to take one more step yeah. and try to find out where Alvy actually does belong. It's not enough just to say, Alvy doesn't belong here because he's, and you give three reasons or two reasons or whatever reason you think. And that's not enough. You need to go and find where Alvy actually belongs. Now, that's a lot of work. I'm not denying it. It's going to take you another couple of hours to find out not only where Alvy belongs, but to source him correctly to that correct family. But that's the only way we can do this because we want this record and every record that we touch that has our name on it. It's going to have your name on it that you removed him. Because the person, next person that comes along is going to say, Brother Hill is the one who removed him. He did this. And you want to be able to be able to stand up and say, yes, I did that. And these are the reasons I did it. And he's in the correct family now. When I did what? that, I didn't, I didn't know you were supposed to go out and hook him to somebody. I just, this you was didn't a long know, time ago. You didn't know you were supposed to what? Well, I wasn't familiar that when you deleted someone from that family, I just thought, well, he didn't belong there. I never thought about what you're saying. I agree with what you're saying, but I never thought about going and finding where he does belong. Well, it's a self-protection. Yeah. It's, it's for self-protection because he, what's going to happen is that that person's going to come back and say, yes, he does and put him back or he still, or perhaps even worse, He's going to just float. And we don't want either of those things that are with our name attached. Your name is going to be attached to him floating. Do you want that responsibility? No, because he's going to be looking for me in the spirit world. That's right. Oh, good. You're getting it. <laughs> That's right. So this, this is your responsibility to make sure that you do that. And uh, so you cannot delete him. All right. It, the button for yeah. delete is just not going to be available. Do you see? Uh, here's Alvi, and see where it says "delete person unavailable." Do you see that? Mm -hmm. Because most people are not going to be able to be deleted uh, if you didn't put them in. So you're not going to be able to. There's. Be sure that you use correct wording. You're not deleting them. You're removing them from the family. All right. Now Karen, let's look. Karen, yes. You, yes. You asked what I would do. Um, yeah. Unless, what would you do? Unless it's a, you know, a close family member that I know for sure doesn't belong there, I would probably try and find out who put it, who added him to the family, and then email them or something and ask them, tell them what why I think he doesn't belong and see what they say, and then, you know, wait to give him a week or two, and then if I don't hear back from him, I'd probably go ahead and delete him. <laughs> or just, okay. I don't disagree with what you're saying. And we're going to talk about that in just a minute. If I'm convinced that somebody doesn't belong someplace, I remove them. You are under no obligation to notify or get permission from another person to change something in family search. 
Do you understand that? Not you just yeah. Shirley, but everybody. You have no, you don't have an obligation to another person to, to do that, to request permission or to even inform them. But that's because you have made sure by looking at all the sources, all the hints, ancestry, everywhere that you can to make sure that you're correct. And once you have decided that you're correct, then you don't need their permission or even their uh, notification. You don't even need to notify them. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't notify them. And we're going to look at something in just a minute about notifications. Um, so you want you might want to contact the submitter. So good, that's a good idea, Shirley. And here we go uh, under Alvi. Um, go up to the top. Look, here's a person who says that he is the direct grandson, and he was and he's confirming that date of his birth. Now let's say that remember we're pretending that we don't believe Alvi belongs in this family and that that's not his correct family group. Well, you're right. I would contact Jordan here. Now, one of the, there are several things on this little thing. Do you ever look at this, you guys? Do you ever look at this little thing? Yes. This little um, screen? Yes. Do you all look at that? Good. Okay, so you can do, there are several things I'm on this screen. You can request to view their relationship. Because this man has not ever clicked that button to um, be able to let other people see their relationship. I think it was just an oversight. Probably it was just an oversight because I think most people do that. And I hope you have done that. Each one of you that are listening have enabled that. So let's go to this guy. View my relationship. Ah, there we go. So there's me. And there's my line. And there is, this person is a woman. And Mary Josephine Perkins is her mother. And you can see how it goes right up the line and how we are related. We're eighth cousins. I was looking at our my family search last night. And I, did, I, I don't remember what I was doing. <laughs> but I realized that my husband and I are 10th cousins. <laughs> that's the first time i'd ever seen that or found that it was very interesting but it's it's way back i mean you know it's not even something i ever thought about anyway but here's here's the how this person how the person who submitted this information how they are related to this to this line and to you all right i think that's pretty interesting so you, you might want to go to them and remembering that you have no obligation to do so. But let's say you want some further information or you want to figure out why they have that or there, there's just something there that you want to know. Let me tell you, one time I was looking, uh, just looking around at some information that I had entered many years ago and had worked on a lot, which is my Harlow line. And so my... Uh, grandmother's brother, Vernon, what is in Family Search, and I've worked on him, put pictures of him, and etc. And so I was just looking at the list of children that he was amongst. Someone had removed him completely from the family. He wasn't there anymore. And I knew that I had put him in originally and that he was in there. So I found him in Family Search and put him back and wrote that person who did that because their name is on there. Their reputation is on the line, just like yours is when you say something is true in Family Search. And this person wrote me back and said, I don't know why I did that. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so be sure that uh, you are correct when you remove anything and you certainly can go to individuals and ask them or talk to the submitter. And I have done this many times and I won't necessarily have to go over that with you. Now, I want you to, can you see that? My family, uh, my uh, ancestral quest screen. We're still looking at family search, I think. Okay, well, I use a 
a desktop program uh, called Ancestral Quest. And I do a lot of descendant lines. So I always go to my descendant lines and try to figure out stuff. Recently, I've been working on a, a project in Greene County where I do a lot of my genealogy in Kentucky. And I've been working on what they call a list of gold star boys who died, who are from Greene County and who died in World War II. Um, I found one boy who I can't find a picture of and I can't find an obituary and any notification at all of the family that he died. So because I had descendant lines, I was able to go to his, he, this boy, his name is David Vincent McCubbin. And um, his father, David uh, T. McCubbin, was married three times and had children from each of those marriages. And I was able to contact uh, all of his children, by the, all the grandfather's children, David T. McCubbin, are all dead. And most of his grandchildren are dead. So that means that all the nieces and nephews of this man, David Vincent McCubbin, who died in World War II, are dead. So I had to go to their children. And so far, I, and I've written to them on Facebook. So it's a lot of fun to go and try to find these people on Facebook. Because I knew his name, and I knew where he was born. And so I looked for this man, his name was Tim Holt, and I, I found him, and I wrote to him, and he was able to, he told me, it was not satisfactory because he didn't have a picture of him, but he told me he didn't know who this guy was, and his mother didn't know either, and it, his mother was the niece of this guy, and it, so some families are so extended and so um, not connected with each other that they don't even know their aunts and uncles. And that's a very sad thing. But at the same time, what if he'd had a picture of this guy? It would have been great. So as you work on these uh, individuals and you're looking to find various kinds of information, don't, don't overlook descendant lines because they're, they may have stuff that you don't have. They may have Aunt Maggie's uh, you know, album and it's in there. And you just, you'll never know if you don't ask because it's in their drawer or it's in their closet or it's in their attic. And they, it's not important to them, but it's important to you because you want to know these individuals. It's important to the Savior. He knows who they are and we're preparing the record for the Savior. And so we want to make sure that we have these records as clear and as concise and as um, complete as possible, including their pictures. So I want to encourage you to work on pictures. Go to Facebook. You can go to Find a Grave. Um, I'm sure you've all worked with Find a Grave. Find a Grave is not always right. So if you, there are places on Find a Grave you can go to to see who submitted a, who maintains the memorial for Find a Grave, or who placed a picture there or who placed other information. So you can go to those places and go to whoever has submitted anything in Find a Grave and try to get correct information because sometimes it's not right. There's, there's times when I have looked at Find a Grave, I have been looking at the, a picture of the stone and the stone date is different than the date that uh, is listed in Find a Grave. It's different. So how do you decide which of those dates is correct? The stone so could be you, wrong too. I'm sorry? The stone could be wrong too, depending on who gave the information. That, that's true. That's because, so be sure that you know that find a grave is not a primary source. A primary source is, is official records. And anybody who um, created that stone went to the stone maker and said, this is the date. It, they didn't necessarily, I've seen many, many, many incorrect dates. So you have to make sure that the, that the date even in find a grave is correct. So I hope this has been helpful to you. Um, there's, again, I want to just reemphasize that you're not obligated to contact the person who's put incorrect data. You are obligated to put correct data because this is, again, a record that we're providing for the Savior. Do you have I any mean, questions? 
Yeah, I got to, can I make a comment? Yes, of course. We're talking about records sometime not being correct. When I was younger, my, my grandmother was always doing genealogy and uh, was in charge of doing the genealogy and the wards and stuff when I was younger, doing it the old way. Anyway, she submitted, remember the long forms that the church used to get? Of she, su she submitted all these, this genealogy to Salt Lake in my name. <laughs> and she swears up and down, I spell my name wrong. So she spelled it what she thought was right. My middle name is Lloyd and it's L-O-Y-D-E. And she says, I misspelled it. It should be L-L-O-Y-D. So all the church, early church genealogical records with my name saying I submitted it, it's got my name wrong. And I didn't submit it, but she put my name on it. So even in the church records, you can have mistakes. That's true. But that's why you need primary sources. And until the day, until the day she died, she tells me I spelled my name wrong. <laughs> well, that's interesting. How did your mother spell it? L O Y D E. And I even showed her the birth certificate and she goes, Well, they spelled it wrong. <laughs> because her brother's name was Lloyd and it's L L O Y D. And most people spell it that way. But I have found three or four other records where they spell it my way. Well, and just keep correcting it, you know, and keep showing why you're right. And yeah. your birth certificate is one reason. Okay, thank you for that comment. Is there anybody else that would like to make a comment or a question? Well, don't take for granted how to spell names either. Well, but right. That's I've why we use them. I got ancestors named Green, and it's G-R-E-E-N-E. -E -E. I find so many records does not have the E on it. And I have records by the the grandfather saying this is the way they spell their name and that's the way they prefer it. But if you tell someone uh, that ancestor's name is green, they normally spell it the way we think of green. And I go, I, and I, I know sometimes people think I'm crazy, but they'll tell me a common name. And I'll go, how do you spell that? No, I understand. Wife, my wife's name is Becky. And everybody says, no, it's Rebecca. And I go, no. Her birth certificate says Becky, not Rebecca, and it's B-E-C-K-I-E. -E. It does not have a Y on it. So we should not just take for granted how somebody spells the name. That's right. That's why we need the source. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, good. Thank you for that comment. Anything else? 